do such a great job, and we're so glad to, to have them and, and them giving of their talent to be able to, to uh, just share with us and stuff. It just makes things good. I'm, I'm just tickled to death. I, like I said, it, I think I feel like preaching now. <laughs> it's good to see everybody this morning. Looks like the kids have all got up and got out and went on, so good deal. Let's be praying for them as they uh, go back and learn more about Jesus. Amen. And today, hopefully, what we can do is learn a little bit more about Jesus. And here's what we're, uh, here's what we're up against today. Uh, let, me, let, me just, let me just share some things with you that, that's, that's kind of going on. We, we've got an awful lot of things going on here at the church. Man, we're, just, uh, we're, so, we're <laughs> just so blessed to have people who are involved and blessed to have people who are doing different things. And we've got more and more people coming up and saying, hey, how about this and how about that? And, and thanks for people to be involved in. And here's, here's the encouragement that I want to give to everybody, to each and every one. Listen, church and church family is about being involved. And it's about finding your place and about being active and doing certain things and, and, and different things like that. And one of the reasons why you have different things going on, uh, small groups, uh, Sunday school classes, uh, evening worship services, Wednesday night worship services, uh, uh, different things like that is so that we can find a place to come and be a part of, that we can kind of get in there and kind of get locked in, and we can develop uh, relationships and friendships with each other and to know that we can rely on each other and to, to when we get together and, and come together in fellowship that we can talk to one another and that we can know that if I share something with someone, uh, to know that they're going to be praying for me that they're going to be there for me, that they're going to be able to, to help lift me up and help me to go through the, time, uh, the times that I'm going through, whether they be good, whether they be bad. So we're just, I'm just real excited about the different things that are happening. We're, we're, we're excited about the different things. If you looked out south here and see uh, uh, the improvement that's being made out here on the parking lot, we're going to have more parking space uh, out here before long, and we're going to be able to help maybe get some of the traffic off of the off of the Seneca here and that sort of thing and maybe you know, have a place back here to park and different things. We've got other plans that's in the works uh, about expanding the sanctuary and just exactly how that looks right now, we don't know. We're, we're in the process of trying to put some things together to look at it and to see what we need to do and how is the best way to go about doing that. Hopefully one of these days before long what we'll see is we're going to see some double doors back here in the, in the back of the fellowship hall back here. And there's going to be a place where you can drive through, you can drop off, and, and you know, the ladies don't have to worry about getting wet and that sort of thing and stuff. And it's just a straight shot in, a straight shot out. Uh, so there's just so many things that are happening, so many things that are in the works. And it's, it's something to be excited about. It's something that we, we can look at and we can say, hey, there, things are happening, things are going on. But here is the key to all of it. Here is the key to all of it. Why do we do all those things? Why is it that we're even talking about those things? Why, why is it that we're talking about maybe ex or expanding our, our sanctuary? Uh, why are we doing the things that we're speaking of and the things that we're talking about? So that one more can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So that one more can come and be part of the church family and lock in and be a part of the things that's happening and the things that's going on. I've had some people come to me before. I was at a particular church one time and and uh, one of the things that, that we, we saw and we noticed, you know, the church was, was capable, very capable of handling 300-plus people inside the sanctuary. And uh, when, when I went there, uh, we had the sum total of about 35 people going to church. And I, I preached and would encourage and let's get out and let's do let's be in the community and let's you know let's let's go get people and things like that and one day after i had finished preaching a a, a message and and things that one of the, there was a, a lady come up to me and she says well she says i hope we don't get that big and i said i just kind of looked at her and i said really she said no she says i wouldn't know everybody that was there guess what? You're not supposed to know everybody. You're supposed to get to know people, amen? You're, you're supposed to be excited about the opportunity of being able to get to know some people, see some people, and introduce yourself and that sort of thing, that you can make a new relationship, develop a new relationship for more people. The kingdom of heaven, let, let me tell you, we have not outgrown the kingdom of heaven. God is fully capable of adding on. All you got to do is look at the universe as it is right now. 
He's fully capable. And guess what? God wants to add on. Now, you know, I, I speak in terms like that. I don't know what God's got and, I, and, and what heaven looks like and that sort of thing and stuff. But I know it's going to be a beautiful, wonderful place, and I know it's the place I want to go, right? I want to go there. Where's Sheila at? Sheila's back there in the back. Her and Carissa had this one thing one time. Uh, we were talking about going to heaven and things like that, and all of a sudden, I think it was Carissa that said, Honolulu. And uh, Sheila said, I want to go there. So, I mean, guess what? Heaven is better than Honolulu, all right? We want to go there. And so it, we, can, we can look at it. We can be excited. We can be happy for the things that are happening, the things that are taking place. Be happy that when God looks and he says, hey, here's a place where I'm active, where I'm working, where I'm doing things, and you can come and be a part of this too. And we want to be able to be that kind of place. We want to be the place where people come. Listen, what, what happens when you set something on fire? I mean, if you set a big old brush fire on, on fire, what happens? Everybody in the county comes by and says, what's burning, right? I mean, last night, Michelle and Danielle went out, and there, there was this big old plume of smoke out there, and they had to go see what was burning, you know? So here's the thing. If we're on fire, guess what's going to happen? People are going to want to come see what's going on. They're going to want to see, see what, what, what is it that's causing this fire. Where, where's this coming from? What's taking place? And brothers and sisters, we want more than anything. When somebody comes through those doors, we want more than anything for every single one of us to know it's the Holy Spirit alive and well. It's the Holy Spirit guiding and directing everything that's happening and taking place here in our midst. One of the prayers that Michelle and I pray for, for this place, we, play, we pray it almost every Sunday. We pray that the Holy Spirit would fall like rain in this place. That the Holy Spirit would totally engulf this place. So that when we come here, we know there is something different about today. And no, no, nothing different about the sun coming up. Nothing different about the sun going down. But there is something different in coming in the midst of the church family that we might be able to be together, to fellowship together, and to worship together. That's what we've done here today. We've come together to worship. We've come together to be able to sing the songs that we've sang this morning to Jesus. The, the, the song that uh, just got through being all prayed up. Are you all prayed up? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to see the gates open wide? Are you ready to see that? Uh, this is, uh, okay, are y'all with me today? What's going on? <laughs> may, may, maybe, maybe you'd say, yeah, I'm kind of ready, but just let's don't go too quick, okay? I mean, maybe that's what you were thinking, right? Yeah, I'm ready, but not today, right? I don't, I'm not real. You know, we don't, have a, we don't have a choice over that, right? We don't really know whether or not for sure we're going to have tomorrow, whether we're going to be able to be here tomorrow. That's why we need to be prayed up today. That's why we need to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life today. And here's the thing, and here's the key for each and every one of us. If you do not have this personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have not personally asked him to come be Lord and Savior of your life, please do so today. It will be the greatest decision that you have ever made in your life. Because the songs that we sang this morning, the things that have happened, the things that are taking place will be absolutely real and true to us in our life. If what we will do is seek after him. Ask him to be the Lord and Savior of our life that he might come and live inside of us. So here's a good, here's a good deal. Uh, here's a, a saying that I have I come up with. It. This is kind of the, maybe the theme of the message today. Dare to dream with faith that can move mountains. Dare to dream with faith that can move mountains. Uh, how many of you have things that you would really like to accomplish? I mean, isn't there, isn't there something that you would really like to accomplish? So here's, here's, a, here's a good question for us. How about our vision? Do we have a vision? Where are we headed? Have we really even gave thought to where we're headed in our life? Have we really and truly ever even gave thought as to from, from right now till whenever, to however long God gives me, what, what is the vision of my life today? Where am I headed? Where am I going? Or am I just kind of floating along? Am I just kind of being tossed with the, with the wind? Am I flapping in the wind out here? Am I kind of just going along? Or do I have a goal set? Is there something in mind? Is there something that I'm wanting to accomplish? Is there something in my life that I know good and well God has called me to? God, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, God's not through calling people. 
He's not through. And he's not, listen, whenever we think about God calling, we always go preacher, missionary, Sunday school teacher. Right? God's broader than that. God's got so much more than that. There's so many more things that God wants us to be involved in and things that God wants us to do. It's not just those things. It's not, the calling doesn't just fall on those folks for that right there. God's got a calling for everybody to do something, to be a part of something, to be active in some way. That's why it's so important for us to know and to understand. We need to be active. We need to be a part of. And here we go. Let me just make you mad again before we get started about the fact that it's more than just a Sunday morning experience. It is so good to come together on Sunday morning. It's so good that we can gather together and we can do the things that we do. But the Christian life doesn't start on Sunday morning and end at 12 o'clock noon Sunday. It, it, it's, it's an everyday experience. It's an experience that we have every single day. And God wants us to be active doing something for him, working with him, working with him in, in things that goes on in places where he's at. One of the things we need to remember and understand, God is always at work doing something. And what we need to do is join him where he's working. How many times what we do, and you've heard me say this probably more so on Sunday nights than, than, than on Sunday mornings, but so many times what we do is we say, God's over here working and he's doing something over there, but this is what we're doing right now. Our church family's working on this, we're doing this. But God's really active and really doing something over here, but, but, but we're going to go on and we're going to just continue to do what we do and that sort of thing and stuff. Aren't we missing a blessing? Aren't we missing a blessing because we're not joining God where he is working at, where he is active at? So what about our vision? Where's our vision? Do we have a vision? Proverbs 29, 18 reminds us of this. It says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he that keeps the law. Listen, that verse is telling us and explaining to us that it, we need to have vision. We need to know where we're headed. We need to know who we trust. We need to know what the, the go and have a plan to get there. How many of us know that your plans can change? Right? Change all the time, right? We've got to be flexible. We've got to be fluid. We've got to know that sometimes what happens, the bend of the river will take us a different way, but eventually we're going to come back and stay on course, right? So here's the thing. We need to know and understand, but we still got a place to go. We're still, we've still got a place that we're looking for. This is the place where we want to end up. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you this morning. Is your vision this morning, first and foremost, overall, heaven? Is that your vision? Is your vision really and truly heaven? Is, is our vision something that we're looking at and we're saying, Jesus Christ and who Jesus is and what he did for me on the cross and what he accomplished for me on the cross is my vision saying what I want to do is to recognize that and I want to live my life for him. Heaven. Is that my vision? Or is my vision set on other things? Is my vision set on different stuff? Listen, it is not wrong to say, hey, we need to think about another house or to have a bigger house. It's not wrong to look and say, well, the car's wearing out. We need another car, another vehicle. It's not wrong to say, I need a few more cows. <laughs> Boy, if you could see the look my wife is giving me right now. Ooh. Listen. We got to have a vision. It's not wrong to say I need a hot tub. A hot tub. <laughs> it's not. It's not wrong to say we need a hot tub. <laughs> we got to have a vision. Where are we going? Where are we headed? See, because what, what this verse is telling us and what it's trying to explain to us is not that we. What happens is what it says when we don't have a vision. People just kind of go off to themselves and get all involved in all kinds of different things and stuff, and they do not keep their eye on the mark. You see, if we don't have prophetic vision, if we don't have vision, if we don't have a plan, if we're not looking towards something, if we don't have a go for something, then what happens is we just kind of scatter about, and we kind of go with the wind. And we move with the wind, and we go here, and we go there, and we do different things. We're doing absolutely everything except 
what it is that we're supposed to be doing. So we need to remember to understand that when we, what we need to have is we need to have this prophetic vision, this prophetic vision being led by God. How many, I hope every single one of us knows this. We've, we've heard this many, many times. There is not one single person in sitting in here today that does not have reason and does not have purpose for being here. Every single person is valuable. God sets value on you and wants you to know how much he loves you and how much he cares for you and how he wants to do things in your life, how he wants to be there in your life, taking care of you in the, th- in the everyday things of life. So many times we look at things and we kind of, I think people kind of look like, well, God couldn't possibly be interested in this part of my life. God is interested in everything of our life, every part of our life. Every, if you've got a splinter in your finger, God, God's interested. Listen, if God knows the, hair, uh, the, the number of hair on your head, he knows if you've got a splinter in your finger. If he knows when a sparrow falls to the ground, he knows everything about us. And he knows what, is, what, 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 needs, what needs to go on inside of us. And he also knows and to understand that what we need is we need to have vision. We need to have direction. We need to have a place where we know this is where we're headed. This is where we're going. We need to know that in our life. So uh, those, if what we will do is, is, is have and, and, and follow God's vision for us, prophetic vision. If we follow God's prophetic vision, vision, we can cast off the restraints. We won't be blown and going in every direction. But what we'll do is we'll be headed where we're supposed to be. So if we follow God, if we follow Jesus, if we follow his teachings, if we take the word, look at the word, read the word, apply the word to our life, then we know we can have vision and we can be headed in the place that we're supposed to be going. Acts chapter 2 verse 16 starts to explain something to us. Uh, The writer of Acts tells us this. He says, but this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel uh, In in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Brothers and sisters, what is our vision today? What is it that we're doing today? Why are we here today? Are we here for me? Am I here for just myself? Or am I here to worship God? Am I here that I might be able to edify my brothers and sisters in Christ? Am I here that I might be able to lift them up? Am I here that I, when I hear that what, what has been said on the prayer list, have I, do, I, do I take and, and, and say, I'm going to pray for those people? Am I going to lift the people up? Whoever was in Sunday school this morning and said, I need prayer in this area or something's happening in my life. Have I got that in mind? Am I taking that and am I applying it to my prayer life? Am I using it in my prayer life? Am I lifting up my brother or sister? Did someone pass away this week and I need to go see them? Did did somebody go to the hospital? Did I go to see them? Listen, okay, here we go. Pastor's fixing to get in trouble again. It is not just the pastor's job. That's part of the pastor's job. But guess who gets to be a part of that? All of us. All of us are to be a part of that. It's not just to be just the pastor's job to go and do these things. See, God's called us all. If you notice in these verses, he kind of covered the bases. Men, women, young and old. He called everybody. All of us are going to be a part of this. All of us should be a part of this. And what we're doing is when we do this and we, when we allow this to be a part of who we are, when we catch that vision and we see that vision of where we're headed, where we're going, the things that's taking place, the things that are happening, when we see those things, what happens is people come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. They give their heart and their soul to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, that's why we are here. Listen, what we're doing this week, right now what we're doing is we're coming together to worship so we can do what? Go be the church. You're not in church. You are the church. 
Our job is to be the church. We are to be the hands and feet of Christ. Our job is not necessarily to come in, in here and sit and say amen and glorify. And, I mean, that's a part of what we do. It's all a part of the worship experience. But what we do inside of here is supposed to go outside of us and to go into our community. That's part of the vision of what we're supposed to be. I was listening to Dr. James Merritt speaking this morning. One of the things that he was talking about and, and speaking about the church, and, and I couldn't agree with him more. Listen, we have a twofold mission as a church make disciples and disciple disciples. That is the mission of the church, it's twofold make disciples, disciple the disciples. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go out into the community and make disciples. We're supposed to live our life. Listen to me. Let me. I hope you know this. I hope you're empowered enough inside of your life and inside of your heart that you know that what you are empowered to be able to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. That's not just a preacher's job. Listen to me. Right, let me just, I mean, we know it even in our own, even in our own church family how often do we see someone come to an altar and give their heart to the Lord? But if we are being the church and going outside of the church, people, where's Ron? Ron, people can accept Jesus Christ even on a sidewalk downtown, can't they? You don't just go to an altar of prayer. Although it's a great place to be. But you see, when we take, what did Jesus do? Let, let go back, let's go back and think about it. I mean, here, here we have Jesus, the Son of God. If anybody deserved a temple, if anybody deserved a synagogue, if anybody had deserved to build a building, build, I mean, and wouldn't you think it would have been Jesus? But what did Jesus do? He never built a building. He never said, hey, I've got some great things to tell you, so I'm going to build this building. Y'all come listen to me. He never done that. What did he do? He took the message to the people. And then what did he do? He trained who? Disciples, disciples to do what? To train disciples. To train disciples to train disciples. to train disciples. to train disciples. hey y'all are getting close it's almost everybody got on, almost everybody got on board on that one there that's what we do that's what we're doing every single one of us are to be a part of this this is what's happening this is what's taking place so when he looks at it and he says that especially in toward the last days and brothers and sisters where in the last days are i don't know i'm telling you when we look around us and things we can we got a pretty good argument you know Jesus could split the eastern sky any time. Okay? We, 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 got, we got some pretty good grounds to stand on. But only God knows when that time is. Until that time, what are we supposed to be about and what are we supposed to be doing? And then, 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 then doing what? Making disciples. Making disciples. Amen. Getting them to become disciples. Getting them to, to lock in and to come and to, and to know that, hey, I can grow in Jesus Christ. I can, I can live my life for Jesus Christ. I can learn more about Jesus. I can, I can study my Bible. I can come together with my, my brothers and sisters, and we can learn more about Jesus Christ and who Jesus Christ is. And this is, this is, this is what's so exciting about if what we do, if our vision is this is what we want to do, if this is who we're supposed to be about and the things that we're supposed to be doing, here's what's exciting about that. And it says, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It ain't, we get to participate. What an honor. What a privilege it is. Now, now, now just, just stop and think. Despite the sin in my life, despite of what I have been guilty of committing, God provided a way for me to get forgiveness. 
God provided a way for me to have Jesus come live inside of me. And God has provided a way for me to participate with him in making disciples. That's for every single one of us. Every single one of us gets this opportunity to be able to participate in making disciples. So that when it comes to pass, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So vision is important. We need prophetic vision. We need to have a vision. So where are we headed? What is your vision for your spiritual life? Have you ever thought about it? We talk about growing in Christ all the time. We talk about who it is, you know, in Christ and what we're supposed to do and, and, and different things. But, but have, have I made the mark this year to, to measure myself against next year? Have, you know, you know I've, I've, I've used this before, but I mean, you know, you know how we do with the kids and stuff. We, we measure them and see how tall they are, and we put the mark, and we put the date on there, and then we, you know, come back again, come back again, come back again until they get too old, too old, and they go, oh, I don't want to do that no more, and stuff like that, right? And, and, and what happens? I mean, every year the mark changes, right? It gets a little taller. Brothers and sisters, we need a spiritual mark. We need a spiritual mark for where we are right now so that we can measure it a year from now. So that we can look and we can say, where, where am I from where I was this time last year? Am I growing? Am I involved? Am I being a part of what God wants me to be a part of? Am I doing the things that God is calling me to do? And I can look and I can say, okay, well, here's where I've grown. Here's what I've done. Here's what I've been a part of. Here's the things, here are the things that are different from this time last year. What, what about our physical growth? We, we talk about our physical growth and stuff and everything. We, man, I grew so tall, I grew right through my hair. <laughs> and then I quit growing, and then I started doing like this, Right? How many times have we talked about how the spiritual controls the physical? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, uh, believe me, and, and I hope we know this, and I hope we can get this in our heart and know it in our, in our mind. The spiritual controls the physical. The physical does not control the spiritual. The spiritual forces that control us cause us to do and act the way that we do. The things that we do causes us to think the way that we think. Why do you think it's so important that Jesus talk, looked at and, and, and talked about how, how our, our, our mind needs to change? When Paul wrote in Romans and says that our, our mind needs to change. Because the, the, when, the, when the spiritual side comes in and when the spiritual side really and truly begins to take hold and grab hold, what happens is you start to have a paradigm shift in your life. And when that paradigm shift takes place and when it grabs hold of you, you start looking at things differently than you did before. You start doing things differently. You start acting differently. You start talking differently. You start recognizing and understanding that Jesus is who he says he is and that he wants to be active in our lives. The spiritual controls the physical. Brothers and sisters, listen. If you're caught up in your sinful nature, and if what I'm, what I'm telling you is what I mean by that is, I'm saying if you're out living in sin, and I'm talking about doing things, going against God's word, doing things that we know we're not supposed to be doing, being a part of things that we're not supposed to be a part of, you're missing the mark. That's not Wendell saying that. That's the Bible. That's what the Bible says. So that when we, when, if we look at that and we see that, then if, we're, if that's the way that we're living our life, then what we're not able to do is we're not able to please God. We're not able to live for Jesus the way Jesus wants us to live for Him. Still yet, it is spiritual guiding the physical because there are forces of Satan. And, I'm, you know, some people might go, okay, he's getting off the, you know, 
I know that people still are people are thinking that there is no such thing as the devil and there is no such place as hell. But the Bible says both are very real and both are very active. And what we need to do, what we need to understand is that the spiritual controls the physical. Who are we living for today? Is Jesus really and truly Lord of our life? Or are we just kind of going through the motions and saying, hey, he's, you know, good, he's a good guy, he's done this, he's done it. And after all, I did go to church. See, it's so much more than that. It's about a real, true relationship. Because the spiritual does control the physical. Have you prayed and consulted God for his leadership today? Have we really and truly prayed and asked God what, about what, what do I do today? Where do I go today? Who do I talk to today? Some people, I know some people will look and say, well, that's, that's getting to be kind of a little too, you know, whatever, whatever you may call it. That's how involved God wants to be in our lives. That's how involved he wants to be in, in, in our life and what's taking place, what, what's going on inside of our lives. That we could be so in touch with him that if he should say, hey, now's the time to go talk to that person, we stop and go talk to that person. That would say something like, well, why don't you smile at that person today? So nobody smiled at them today. Won't you just give a smile to that? Won't you just shake his hand today and say hi? You never know what the Holy Spirit's up to. And you never know what a simple handshake or a smile can do to change someone's life. There are way too many stories out in the world today where people said, I was walking down the street and I made a promise to myself that if nobody acknowledged me, if they didn't look me in the eye, if they didn't smile at me, if they didn't say hi to me, I would go home and I would end my life. So how important is it to smile? How important is it that you greet people? Because you never know what's going on in someone's life. You never know what's taking place. You see, when we pray and we ask for the leadership of God in our life, the leadership of Jesus, for, for the leadership of the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us in our life, you're not going to have chance meetings. You're going to have vision. And you're going to be able to look and you're going to be able to see, hey, that person there looks like they're having a tough day today. You know, what if I just, what if I just simply, I'm not trying to do anything other than just say hi. You ever stopped and talked to somebody? I mean, just, I mean, you may not even know who they are. And you, you see that something's going on. You see the way they look or something like that. And you stop and you say hi to them. The next thing you know, they're telling you their life story. Did you, do we stop and we do, do we do like this? Oh my goodness, I didn't mean to get into this. How much longer are they going to talk? I didn't want to hear all this. I didn't know any, you know, anything. Or because they got to share, did it change their life? How important is one soul? How important is one person's life? And God may, God may choose us to be the vessel to be able to help that person in their life. It's so important that we remember and understand that we need God's leadership in our life. Okay, quickly, how strong is our faith? How about your faith? We've talked about vision. Now, how about our faith? How strong is our faith? Do you really and truly have faith? How many of us, I mean, how many of us sit, sit here and go, Lord, uh, this is, this is what's going on, and, and boy, we need answers. So da -da 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 and we read it off and everything, stuff like that. Pew, off we go out the door. And then all of a sudden, we, we, something catches our attention, and we look and we go, He answered. I, I got an answer. 
I know what to do now. I, I, this happened. This is what I, you know, this is what I was asked for. This is what I was praying for. And it happened. God answered prayer. How's our faith? Jude, uh, starting at verse 17, says, But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, In the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, we are to build up our faith. We are to recognize and to understand that we can trust God. Amen. Too many times people will say, yeah, but what about? Yes, what about? Let me help us understand something, another, and just listen to this closely. It probably may not be something that you really want to hear, but it's something we all need to know and understand. We are not designed to live forever in this world. These bodies are not designed to live forever in this world. What it means is, is that just as surely as we are born, we are appointed to die. When we, when we come to, are able to grasp it, and I hope as Christians, we're far more able to grasp that, and we're able to understand that if we know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, that does not mean it is the end of our life. We have eternity yet, and where is eternity spent for the Christian, for the follower of Jesus Christ? It's a place called heaven. It's a beautiful, wonderful place, a place called heaven that we get to go be there. And we need to understand that. So it's important that we, we understand that it, despite the, the things that we see around us, despite the, some of the terrible things that we see around us and different things and stuff, we need to know and to understand that we can still have faith in God. He's still going to, God is still in control. And I'm telling you, I wished I had answers for folks. I really do. I wished I had answers for different things in life that take place and different things that happen. And probably one of the most, most frustrating things about being a pastor is trying to answer those questions for people sometimes. But here's what I know, and I know it to be real and true in my life, that my faith in God matters. And my faith in God allows me to hang on and to continue on when if I lose my faith, what I want to do is stop and give up. So it is important that we keep our faith, that we know our faith, even when people scoff at us, even when things happen around us that we can't explain. It is so important that we remember God and who He is and that God is in control, our faith. Matthew chapter 14, verse 29 said, And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked out on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? You ever been in a sinking situation? Only to come to a place and to understand that God always, all, all, was already there. Sometimes we go through things in life. But those things teach us something as we go through them in life. Sometimes those things are not easy. But when we get to the other side and we look back and we can see... God had my hand all the time. God was carrying me all the time. And he's brought me to where I am right now. He's brought me to this place right now. So it's important that we keep our faith. It's important that we understand who we believe in. Jesus said of the centurion, about remember the centurion when the centurion came and says, I've, I've got a, there's a there's a servant at home. This servant means a lot to me. I really care for him. And he's 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 sick and he's paralyzed at home. And and, and I know I know you can heal him. And Jesus says, Well, I'll go with you. Show me the way. And, and remember what the centurion said? He says, No, never he, uh -uh, no. You don't even have to go. He says, Because I, I, I know I, I command men. And when I tell them to go somewhere, they go. 
When I tell them to do this, they do it. And the centurion looked at him and said, I know that if you say he is healed, he will be healed. And Jesus, he, you could, I, 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 I bet Jesus done a little dance on the road out there and said, somebody's got it. He said, no greater faith have I found in all of Israel than the faith of this centurion. He says, truly I tell you, no one in Israel have I found such faith. How's our faith? Could we see the faith of the uh, centurion? How about Paul's ministry? Start chapter 13 of the book of Acts. See Paul's life and we see how, how he lived his life and all the things that took place and all the things that Am I going dead? My, bat, my battery's probably running out. <laughs> Paul is an example. <laughs> the bad thing may be going out, but I ain't gone out yet. <laughs> and somebody, uh, here comes Tracy to the rescue. Uh, our faith, our faith needs to merge with our vision. Our faith needs to merge with our vision. Listen to me. When your faith vision merges together and comes together the way that it is supposed to, you watch what happens. You watch what God does. You watch the things that take place. Because what will happen, we will be amazed at the things that take place. Amazed at the way things happen around us. Because of what God is doing. And because we have the, we, we, we were able to look and we're able to see. Thank you, brother. <laughs> we're able to see the things that happen, the things that take place. Our faith and our vision need to merge together. Now, here's a question for you. It's, I know it's time to go eat. Hang, hang with me just for a few more minutes. Where does God want to take us? Where does God want to lead us? Where does, he want to, where, where does he want the church family to go? Where does he want the church family to, to, to be? What does he want the church family to be? Do we want an attitude like, well, we can't get that big because we won't know anybody? Do we, do we need to, I mean, are we, are we looking for a, a, a place where we're, we're saying, okay, this is good enough? Uh, this, is, this is as much as I need in my spiritual life. Is, is, am I, this is as much as I need where, where God wants to, wants to take us or wants to take me. You see, where's our vision? What's God doing? Where's God taking us? What does he want us to be a part of? What does he want us to do? I have explained and I have used this before. When you take an arrow out and you use an arrow, an arrow is meant for something. It is meant to puncture through something. The most important part of that arrow, I'm talking about the arrow itself. We know we've got to have energy behind the arrow, right? We know we've got God. God's the energy, right? But when God sends that arrow out, the arrow is supposed to find its mark. What is the most important part of the arrow? The point. Because it does what? Makes impact. And brothers and sisters, God is calling us to make impact to our community around us. Impact to our church family and impact inside of each and every one of our lives. I've got a little clip that I would like you to watch real quick, if you would, please. It's not very long. It won't take you but just a couple of minutes to watch it. Uh, Lynn, could you turn the... Uh, Denny's going to catch the lights there real quick. He's going to...
See, faith is the presence of belief. Brothers and sisters, when we allow our faith and our vision to connect, you watch what God does. You watch the things that happens and the things that takes place. And you watch the impact that it has on the community around us. Brothers and sisters, real true revival. What we're asking for is real true revival, a revival that happens and starts inside of me that it might go on to the next and then on to the next and on to the next. Brothers and sisters, that is exactly what Jesus is after. That's exactly what Jesus done with the disciples. That's exactly what the disciples done when they went and made disciples. We too are to go make disciples. We too are to have faith. We too are to have vision. And we are to take that faith and that vision and let them collide. When something collides, what happens? Energy is, is made, Right? I mean, what, what happened if God did create the world through the Big Bang Theory? God's God. He can do anything he wants, right? I can just imagine that when God said, let there be, and everything went, Poof. I just happened to be, it was done in seven days. Where others think it was billions of years. Vision. Faith colliding together. Watch it happen in our life. Watch it happen in our church family's life. And watch it happen outside of these walls. Amen. 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 Let it be. Who, and wasn't it the Beatles that sang the song, Let It Be? Let it be, let it be. <laughs> what's, what's the rest of the song, Clint? <laughs> Clint says, I don't know, I wasn't born then. <laughs> Vision, faith, colliding together. Amen? Amen? Stand with me and join me in prayer.